Hello and welcome to the second edition of our Behind the Scenes series. This is Daniel Ducina, Director of Investments at Blue Chip Partners, and today I will be discussing the rationale behind our recent model change to include genuine parts in O'Reilly Automotive. The specific genesis of this move, you have to look back all the way to the end of July in which we removed RTX Corporation from our internal models as a result of what we perceive to be a potential fundamental change in the business. And thus, we spent some time looking around the equity markets for what we viewed as prudent opportunities going forward, and we arrived in the auto parts retail space. So genuine parts in O'Reilly Automotive, as alluded to, do operate in that automotive parts retail space. Um, specific to the auto parts retail space, we have a few different components of why we view the space as attractive right now. Um, specifically related to the higher automotive prices right now, new automobiles cost significantly more than they did pre-pandemic, and this is very much tactical and by design by the OEMs. Um, prior to the pandemic, there was very much a volume approach, just sell as many cars as possible, regardless of if you have to discount or not. That is no longer in place. Um, the OEMs have gotten a lot smarter and are charging higher prices, even if they're doing less in you know, absolute values of sales. Uh, and as a result of this, we do believe that people will continue to hold on to their vehicles for longer. And with more and more miles driven, you can only defer maintenance for so long. And thus, we do think that the auto parts retail space overall is set up for some secular success over the next three to five years. When we think about the positioning in an economic environment that we're in right now, um, certainly, we do have some level of economic slowness starting to permeate in the U.S. And realistically, even if we do get continued slowness economically, we don't view these auto parts retail firms as necessarily ripe for decline in any capacity. Um, these are somewhat staple-like in nature, given the fact that I mentioned earlier, you can only defer maintenance on your cars for so long and the fact that we have a fair amount more do-it-yourselfers in this space as well. So overall, we think that this industry can provide an attractive balance of offense and defense in client portfolios. From there, you just have to determine which companies will allow you to put your best foot forward in the markets. So differences between Genuine Parts and O'Reilly are started to be shown on the screen right now. So with Genuine Parts, um, they are not necessarily a pure play auto parts retailer because part of their business, 40% of revenue, is tied to the sale of industrial parts. But when we look at the actual auto parts segment, 80% of revenue is tied to what is called Do It For Me. Um, you might know the Napa brand name, which is the, the Do It For Me segment, the retail stores that they operate. Um, so 80% of the revenue is tied to a, a stickier, albeit lower profitability segment. 20% um, of the revenue is in what is called the do-it-yourself space, which is just an individual coming in and buying parts and going and fixing or maintaining a vehicle themselves. Do-it-yourself is higher margin, but it's obviously less sticky. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily have the kind of brand loyalty that the do-it-for-me space does have. Um, Fairly diversified from a geographic perspective, but the bulk of the revenue is coming from North America. When we compare GPC to O'Reilly, um, O'Reilly realistically is a little bit more blended when it comes to the do it for me versus do it yourself. So you can see 45% of revenue, that sticky, lower relative margin, do it for me. Um, and the other half, that you know high margin, potentially more volatile, do it yourself space. Um, Again, both of these categories are beneficiaries of the, the overall industry thesis that I outlined earlier, but we do kind of like the idea of a balance, which is actually what led us away from a company in this industry, AutoZone, that is very heavily tilted towards the do-it-yourself space. Higher margin, but not necessarily as reliable in terms of stickiness going forward. And O'Reilly, relative to GPC, is very much a pure play their sole business is related to auto parts sales. Uh, one interesting aspect that I didn't touch on in the initial behind the scenes review, um, this is just a, a snapshot of some metrics that we look at when we're scoring companies from a quantitative perspective. Uh, you can see that all of these companies, 
uh, and I included AutoZone as their appear, um, score well for us on these metrics within the consumer discretionary sector. Uh, free cash flow conversion, that's how quickly or how significantly firms can turn their operating profit, profit into actual free cash flow. Gross profitability, that's uh, how companies can leverage the assets that they have in terms of generating gross profits. And then net debt to EBITDA is just a, it's a balance sheet to income statement metric. So it's kind of showing you how much operating profit um, can a firm generate given the debt they're taking on. If you see a real high number here, that's not a good sign. If you see a real low number here, it's not a good sign. But these scores are reflective of one being the most attractive in a sector uh, and you know higher numbers being the least attractive in a sector. So all of these companies score fairly well for us. And what that tells me is that the industry overall should be somewhat attractive to us. Now, as it comes to genuine parts in particular, as I mentioned before, they're not a pure play auto parts retailer, but the vast majority of their business, 60% of revenue is. Um, and we also like the fact that we're getting shares at a steep discount relative to history right now. You very rarely get the opportunity to buy shares of genuine parts when they're yielding 3%. Um, investors have not been super warm on shares this year, but that's okay because if you take a long-term time horizon in your, in your investment approach, um, we're comfortable that we still like the business overall and we like the industry and the secular trajectory it's on. And so we're comfortable with buying at a discount. We're excited about that. Uh, realistically, if you want to have a closer look at some of the catalysts and risks, I do have the, this PDF file, which is a condensed version of our overall investment review available for download uh, at the link below. As it pertains to O'Reilly, O'Reilly really has been the consistent kind of best in class executor in the space. Uh, generally the highest operating margins amongst peers. And we do kind of like the fact that even though as a pure play auto parts retailer, they have an even split of revenue between that very sticky do it for me stream of revenue and the higher margin do it yourself. Uh, we, we kind of like the balance there. And although this company doesn't pay a dividend, they have consistently executed meaningful buybacks, which investors should view as an additional form of shareholder yield. So I'll just run through two last items, um, one on G GPC, one on O'Reilly. Um, I mentioned you're getting shares of GPC on sale right now. Well, one very easy way to check this out is just looking at a history of the, the shares of GPC's price to earnings ratio. So share price divided by earnings per share. High price to earnings ratio would generally imply that a company is expensive. Low price to earnings ratio would imply that it's cheap. Well, that's all well and good, but you, you, have to, you can't just look at it in a vacuum. So what we do is we look at um, the valuation metric relative to the company's own history and use a kind of five-year trailing time frame to look at that. So what you're seeing on the screen right now, the gray line is genuine parts Genuine parts, um, shares of genuine parts is trailing price to earnings ratio. What you're seeing in the blue line is the five year average trailing price to earnings ratio. And then this dark brown line and this light brown line are showing you one standard deviation above and below that average. So essentially, what, how you can interpret this is that when the price to earnings ratio of GPC pops above that dark brown line, shares are probably pretty expensive when it pops below that light brown line, shares are probably pretty cheap, at least just relative to the company's own history. And then the final part of this chart is showing you the forward one year return from each of these points. And so you can see the reason that this cuts off at the, you know, in November of 2022 is because we, we don't have the data for that quite yet. Um, but the overall takeaway from this chart is that generally speaking, if you have an opportunity to buy or make or initiate a position in genuine parts when you're close to one standard deviation below the five-year trailing price to earnings ratio, that's generally voted well for shares. So I'm looking at uh, periods like, you know, the beginning of 2016, um, the beginning of 2018, even the middle of 2017, of course, after the pandemic, but then also, you know, the beginning of 2022. So given the fact that you are able to get shares right now at a pretty steep discount relative to its own five-year history, we think it's a pretty attractive time to make an initiation into these shares. 
As it pertains to O'Reilly, I mentioned they have kind of consistently been best in class from an operating margin perspective. The reason that you see O'Reilly and AutoZone much higher on the margin perspective, from a margin perspective, it just relates back to that higher population of do-it-yourself revenue. As I mentioned, this is much higher margin, higher profitability, less sticky relative to the do-it-for-me space, which is where Genuine Parts has an 80% revenue share at their company. Um, so we like that out of O'Reilly. Uh, even though they have um, more of a do-it-for-me split than AutoZone, they've been able to consistently have more, more attractive operating margins. So we like that. Um, that speaks to management. That speaks to the quality of the business. They're running smoothly and kind of firing on all cylinders, if you will. Um, the last point I'll touch on, shareholder yield. I mentioned that um, while Genuine Parts does pay an attractive dividend, O'Reilly does not. Uh, that's just a capital allocation decision that the, the company has made. Um, but they do buy back a significant amount of their own shares, or that's something that they have consistently done if you look back through history. Um, this is not an explicit return of capital like a dividend is. It's not something that you will see on a statement on a quarterly basis. But mechanically speaking, you can think of it as an additional form of shareholder distribution because by taking shares out of the market, it's one of, it does multiple things. Number one, it's an expression of confidence by management that shares are attractive at this price. Um, so you should take that as a vote of confidence. But number two, by taking shares out of the market, that can generally increase earnings per share, at least perceived earnings per share. That can decrease the price to earnings ratio and thus make shares more attractively valued. So again, I do look at shareholder yield. Um, it's more than just, share, more than just dividends, um, but including that in this conversation I thought might be helpful just for some folks that um, might try to understand why we're buying a company that doesn't pay a dividend. But overall, we're using O'Reilly and GPC as half positions. And so if you want to take them as such, realistically, if it was just one position, that company would be paying you know, roughly a 1.5% dividend, which is still above the S&P 500's average dividend yield right now. Thank you all for watching, and I look forward to speaking about um, the next opportunity when it comes about.